concern about this program. What was the direction? Where were they going? A.J. Hammonds has stayed for four years. Sometimes he'd be there for one. Boy, and they have continued to put good people around him. They play Purdue style basketball in this uh, day and age of everybody lives with the three. It's a little inside out the way they get their triples. Yeah, and they have two guys. You see right here is the second guy. We can talk about Biggie Swanigan, who is big and strong. He's a freshman, but he loves going down on the block or at the top of the key to shoot. Swanigan missed. Here comes Illinois the other way. The Illini beat Minnesota comfortably, 85-52, and the tournament started on Wednesday afternoon yesterday. Surprised Iowa 68 to 66. Patrick Morgan, six foot ten. He's got perimeter skills, so they'll take Hammonds outside a little bit because he's not going to get much work done inside on AJ. Well, AJ Hammonds got a block shot without jumping. <laughs> <laughs> it's a good start to your day defensively, it's not right? Bad. Speaking of defense, Rafael Davis was the defensive player of the year last year in the league. He's number 35 for Purdue. Hammonds, the defensive player of the year this year. This is where Davis needs to get going. We had them against Michigan State. Tremendous game in West Lafayette. Davis shot lights out in the first half. And the lights have been out since for his shooting. Morgan from the outside converts. And stretching those guys out of the paint may be part of Illinois' equation today. You know, Tom Crane did it for Indiana against Purdue a few weeks ago with Thomas Bryant. And you saw right there, make A.J. Hammonds make two moves. Defend the ball screen and then get back to a shooter. Ooh. That was called on Khalid Lewis, who took the worst of that as Hammonds turns into the 6-3 guard. <laughs> oh, that hurts to watch. Just to goodness. Khalid Lewis maybe would have gotten something done here had he been there, I don't know, a second earlier. But when you're laid against a post guy like Hammonds or the bigger Haas, you're going to get hit in the chops. Uh, that was a legit, a legit hit to the face that knocked him out. Or knocked him down, I should say. It's Edwards to the outside. Hits the three. A 40% three-point shooter. The sophomore from Middletown, Ohio, who got 29 starts last year. Best all-around player. Most versatile all-around player is Edwards. He can drive it. He can shoot it. His dad was a terrific player at Wright State. Bill Edwards played in the NBA for a long time. And again, making Hammonds play the ball screen is going to be essential in this game. Malcolm Hill, who has fit into a good groove thus far in this tournament, gets going early. He had 14 points in that first game. A little bit of a buck yesterday with six, but oftentimes you'll see him struggle in one game, but come back with a big game the next time around. Great find by Edwards. Hammonds inside the easy lane. You talk about doing work in the post. A.J. Hammonds, I'm going to use a word here, obliterated. Maverick Morgan on the block, inside the block, inside the basket, wherever he wanted. Bill misses that second shot. Big E is the nickname of number 50, the freshman from Fort Wayne. Caleb Swanigan sometimes takes too many outside shots as he's trying to expand his range. Edwards hit the deck hard. Galen Coleman lands, trying to find Hill inside. Coleman lands number five for Illinois. 13 points with three threes in the first game. 17 with five threes against the Hawkeyes in the upset yesterday. Freshman from Indianapolis who has come back home for this tournament and found a good flow. 30 points in two games after averaging 10 a game in the regular season. Davis couldn't make the layup and it's out of bounds off of Purdue. This is an Illinois team that was 15 and 18, or is 15 and 18 now, after their performance in this tournament. It was a struggle for John Grissom's team down the stretch. They lost four of their last five games. Really didn't have much going coming into the tournament. They were depleted. The plan was hurt this year because of injuries. But uh, Morgan jump hook's not working in the lane. Not yet. Not one block, one air ball. Good hands by Hill. Took it away from Edwards. Beats everybody down the floor, but missed the dunk. He turned and looked back. Edwards coming. We'll try it again here, Mike. No reason to look back now. Oh! <laughs> I love Malcolm Hill. I do. He's quiet. He, he's respectful. He always comes up and says hello. He, he's smiling over there. I love that kid. I coach against him in AAU, and he's just a wonderful, wonderful kid and a tremendous all-league player. Oh, boy. Yeah, they are finding their way to feed the post from the wing. 
John Gross is upset that A.J. Hammonds is using an arm to clear space, but he's just getting good work and good passing lane. Well, if he wants to use his arm to clear space, obviously that's a problem. But if you're Maverick Morgan, you've got to be tougher than that. You've got to be able to knock that arm up and get under Hammonds to maintain your position. Khalid Lewis, no good. Hammonds the outlet to Davis. His Purdue team, as has been tradition, very good defensively. Give up an average of 65 a game in the league. The foul on Maverick Morgan in his first team second as we hit the timeout. Towards the close. Follow college basketball really until this time of year. Bob Huggins has reinvented himself. You know, what I mean, he's, it, it's press Virginia now. They pick up, they play full court, they get after everybody. It's really a fascinating thing how Bob, uh, Coach Huggins, has what's the right word, Mike? Changed, adjusted. Yeah, he's kind of gone away from adjusted. what his profile he's adjusted was. to what kids want to do and maybe what is more successful in this era as opposed to the other couple eras that he's coached in. I think it's fantastic. Hey, Quinn, what were they talking about last time out? Illinois Huddle, they were talking to the centers, mostly Maverick Morgan, about making Hammond score over you. Get your hands up. Talking about angle play, really, and make him shoot over you, not uh, where, where he gets that inside angle, and it's too easy. Yeah, I'm going to show that in our award-winning skit coming up here under 12 minute timeout. Last one of the year, Swanigan is fouled. It's very disappointing. Last skit of the season. <laughs> what, what's America going to do? Where are they going to learn basketball from? As disappointed as you are, Mike, I know America right now is absolutely crushed. And Skit <laughs> foul on Swanigan. Get your it's first. Get your notebooks out because there'll be some post defense talked about. Want to get out? Edwards nice. in. Hill inside. Ooh. The contact couldn't get the three-point play, but the foul is called on a player who has really built a solid couple of years here at Illinois. Honorable mention, All-Conference performer last season after a freshman year where he became a starter in the final 12 games. And second team All-League. Those numbers leading the team in the three top categories. Mike, what's great about Malcolm Hill? is they start him out in this game at point guard. They don't mind putting him on the right block mm -hmm. in particular. They'll run stuff where he gets in the top of the key. He loves, I mean love, he's already made one, the right elbow where he fades on it a little bit. He's just a versatile guy that last year, I, I, the, the Illinois staff thought that he took too many games off. I, that's certainly not the case this year. Johnny Hill checked in the point guard. He and Thompson share that role. Davis. Able to hang and score. I mentioned he's been a struggle early for Rafael Davis. The last six games, he was 7 of 30 from the field. And split his two shots here. He could not miss against Michigan State on that Super Tuesday we had in West Lafayette. He should have stopped after about 20. Like, 7 for 20 is enough. The extra 10 is killing him. Michael Finke, the redshirt freshman from Champaign. 43 is in. He was being fronted by Hill. And five seconds to shoot for Illinois. Finky and Morgan give John Gross a center combo of two players at 6'10 who have perimeter skills as well. So as this game goes on, it'll be interesting to see what they're able to do. If they draw Hammonds and Haas out of the paint, you'll see Isaac Haas, seven foot two sophomore in a few moments. Late clock got a jack and threes off by none. And here comes Purdue with Davis. To put him with Thias, finds Edwards inside who can't finish. Got the second one, and you mentioned it, Dan. Those are the things that Vince Edwards continues to grow and show. Yeah, he, he's a slashing guy, but he's an active guy. You know, he's a guy that, again, what I talked about with Hill, he can shoot it, he'll drive it a little bit. This is automatic right here. Finky knocking in the three from the corner. You could almost hear Matt Painter as Jalen Coleman lands was working from the left side along the baseline of the street. Help, help, help. Well, they got to the help, but then they left Finky. They couldn't get the last rotation. That's his shot. We've seen it all year. Left corner, right corner, doesn't matter. The kid can make it. Speaking of shooters, that's a pretty good one, too. 31 in white. Dakota Mathias. 
Jackson. Great with a great person to throw it inside. Like Hammonds, who gets a great rebound and throws it down. He's an Indianapolis kid, too. He, he lists himself from Gary. Glenn Park, which is a part of Gary, also came here, played at Carmel, and then went to prep school. But you saw a pretty good ovation for a local kid. Malcolm Hill is off. If you try to get it, couldn't. Boilermakers do push when given the opportunity. None knows the scouting report. Most of the people in the league do. Doesn't mean Matthias doesn't get open looks. Right on cue. That's why you're the best. It's the 180 Big Ten games over here. You <laughs> see all year. <laughs> Just repeat what everybody else says. Dakota Matthias. Knock from Arkansas. Who else in the country sends a good seven-footer, a first-team or second-team all-league player, first-team in Adams' case this year, and brings in another very good player at 7-2 in Haas. Matthias, the rebound. Yeah, Haas did a really good job there. He couldn't get back out to Morgan, but that's all right. He did a great job of playing two different drives by being in help side. Here we go. The lob over the top to Haas. Couldn't secure it. Still plenty of time on the shot clock. Matthias cocks and fires a three. Confident. Ma yes. Matthias is one of those guys, when he draws into the shot quick with confidence, as you said, he, he, he rarely misses. When he draws into it a little bit slow, he's short usually. He's a, a big eye shooter. His eyes get big when he sees the ball coming and ready to go. Eight straight for the Boilermakers. Lead is 10. Nunn able to change that. Kendrick Nunn, junior at Simeon High School in Chicago. That was hard work. None worked off two different screens, set up his man against Rafael Davis, and was able to get it. T.J. Thompson from the outside. Haas fights for it. He couldn't secure it. Mike, the adjustment that Quint talked about before the game, how you play in the post, well, what Illinois is doing is they're taking P.J. Thompson's man and double, double teaming, keeping him in the block or keeping him in the post. D.J. Williams in the game now for Illinois. He started the passing that ended up with a Maverick Morgan. Who, so Illinois, after that run by Purdue, responds with five quick ones to get it back to six. A catch by Haas was out of the paint, making wow. it a little tougher, but was very nimble for the 7-2 man. Wow. Turning to his left shoulder, which he loves on the right block, able to find the other side. Man. Mike, we, we must get this in. You think well, Haas is big when you see him on TV. Yeah. <laughs> it's ridiculous. Oh, man. I respectfully described him when I saw him in person last year and then this. A foul call on Edwards. The refrigerator with arms and feet. I mean, he's so <laughs> thick and strong. I mean, he's just incredibly hard to move for anybody. We're talking the big guys. We're talking their play in the post. And we'll talk post play. Dan's last skit of the year. America weeps. For the last five days, 17 hours, and 23 minutes, you've been a passenger. I'm back in baby's arms. How I miss those... Mazda's Sky Active technology makes it good to be a driver. Out on the town or in for the night, AT&T helps keep everyone connected. Right now at AT&T, buy the new Samsung Galaxy S7 and get one free. No matter how you hang out, share every minute of it. Buy one. out maybe he gets two fouls like okay good the first team all league players out and here comes the 7-2 guy and you have to do it with Swanigan too <laughs> that's right <laughs> you know Caleb Swanigan. they did a good job on Swanigan first couple possessions Illinois did of keeping him in front of you making him score over not so much against Hammonds 23-17 the Purdue lead is sixth fifth time these teams have played in the Big Ten tournament 
Purdue won both semifinal meetings between these schools. Illinois winning both quarterfinal meetings in Big Ten tournament history. Swanigan was working. It was quick hands to knock it away by Hill. And then out of bounds off Purdue. Illinois ball. So selection Sunday comes your way. In a couple of days, Purdue will certainly be in the field. We'll watch their seed line with Indiana losing. Perhaps a chance for Purdue to win a Big Ten tournament title and improve their case to the committee via line higher up. Now, do you think Michigan's in the tournament? Here's why I have no idea. Coleman lands to Morgan, clock at five. That's not why I have an idea. I just want to keep calling the game. Hill, so able to hit. And it's been a good start. For Hill, after that struggle, continuing his pattern of when he has a poor game, comes back with another one. It's a four-point game. Unless you are sitting Matthias for a third triple. No good. Out of bounds off Illinois. Unless you're sitting and going through all the teams, yeah. you've got a real field of 68. It's so hard to say. We, we used to play, you know, cop when we were in the studio and say, wait a minute, you've got 73 guys in the tournament. Here's Joe Lenardi's updates, taking Michigan from that next four out group to third out behind UConn in action against Cincinnati today and Syracuse, which is done after losing to Pittsburgh in the second round of the ACC tournament. Yeah, St. Mary's drives me nuts. 18 wins, 222 and high. I mean. All right, Klein has checked in. Another very good shooter, freshman at Carmel, Indiana. So much great high school basketball in this state. For many of these young men, this tournament in Indianapolis, opportunity to play in front of family and friends. Haas. Good post feeding by Purdue in this first half part of the story. He'll have the chance for the end one. Those of you who might just be hopping on. Here was the game winner. Walton, who set a Big Ten tournament record for assists with 12. The last one to Cam Chapman. They put two tenths of a second back on the clock, but ostensibly a buzzer beater to keep Michigan's at large hopes alive. And their hopes to win the automatic bid if they win two more games. Yeah, and they play the winner of this game. and. They've beaten both of these teams Michigan has and that was a heck of a game. That was an exciting, fun, up and down game the entire time. A split with Purdue, beat Illinois the opening game of the season. Coleman, that's a tough shot. And a good one for another kid, as mentioned before, from Indianapolis. And Coleman Lance ran through a little baseline action. Coach Knight of Indiana's and Purdue's Gene Cady's old triangle look. And Coleman Land just came off fire. Swanigan is off. Does a good job to get the rebound. Haas picks up the foul. Again, there was a little danger point there about three minutes ago. Purdue was up 10. Matthias hit a couple of threes. Hammonds was going inside, but John Gross's team didn't let go of the rope. They dug in defensively and now back within four. And it started the way it should have started. Either, either Nunn or Hill have to be on the block or excuse me, have to get shots, and none got the first shot that got him back right. going, and right. then he'll hit the second, and that's what you have to have. You have to have your two best going, and then you go to others, but the two stars have got to be involved, and they were. Lewis did a great job, dribbled through three. This could not finish. Hammonds back in on the rebound. Johnny Hill pushes. He's only hit one three-pointer all year. He's one of eight. That shot fake was nice. Hammonds. Comes off his hand so nice. It really man. does. <laughs> you really can just does. see it, right? I mean, just flips with great spin and touch. Like this place is still pretty crowded. I mean, this place is. That's true. That's true. You know, so many Indiana fans here. A little more subdued. You would imagine if Illinois got close to this one, they would jump on the Purdue bandwagon, uh, the uh, Illinois bandwagon. Oh, yeah. Coleman lands. That's the one disappointing thing for the people here. The secondary ticket market, folks, as well, by the way. The Illinois, the Indiana Purdue game would have been such an attraction. It was so rare to see them only once before in the Big Ten tournament. And they met and way back in the day. Hammonds having a good start. Eight points.
Illinois side here this afternoon. Here's your son, Andrew Dan. They came by and rubbed my head. <laughs> is, that, is that a family good luck kind of thing? I don't know. <laughs> You were talking about Michigan and the other teams on that first yeah. four, last four on that list. Florida has lost to Texas A&M a &M and ACC. Finally, you just saw on the bottom of the screen, 72-66. Ohio State, like Michigan in that group of next four out, they play Michigan State here tonight. Oh, what an opportunity for Ohio State. Ohio State's played pretty well. Mark Loving is playing at a high level. He had 24 yesterday, and I'll tell you what, between him and Kata Bates Dion, they have two guys who can go play with anybody on the wing. Lee Lewis lost it. Finky picked it up late on the shot clock. Never really in rhythm on that shot. Here come the Boilermakers back the other way. They're so much better on the floor with Hammonds right now. Yeah, I think it's a dangerous, really dangerous couple minutes here for Illinois. Illinois out of sync totally offensively. Purdue has found a pretty good rhythm with this lineup. He'll play in the point. Davis and Klein up top. Klein hits a three. 40 of 100 shooting the threes this year. Best three shooter coming out of the high school ranks last year. Two-time state champ Ryan Klein got open. But man, oh man, did Coleman Lands take a bad route against a shooter, leaving him wide open. Run from the Dangerous. top. He's short. Yeah, you're right. Dangerous. I just feel they don't have anything offensively going. They've got to get Hill back in. Or, I'm sorry, they've got to get the ball to Hill. Hammonds. And John Gross senses it, too. He's already taken one timeout. But it's one of those that you can't keep waiting yeah. for the media timeout. No. Purdue up 13. They've scored nine in a row. Yes. This is shaving. Out the other way, that's scouting. That's not paying attention to scouting report because that's a play that Purdue runs often for Klein. Klein, the freshman from Carmel, you mentioned, Dan, top high school shooter coming out. Won the three point title at the Final Four last year. They had the competition for high schoolers as well. That shooting prowess has been around since he was a in early middle schooler. At age 12, he won a free throw shooting contest. Right. He, he came into Purdue, they were going to redshirt him. He slapped down, good call. Hammonds, late call, Bill F on it. Fouls Morgan. You know, it's so important, high school coaching, you're talking about Ryan Klein. He played for a coach named Scott Hetty. Scott Hetty taught Ryan Klein so well that when Klein came to Purdue, because of his body, they wanted to redshirt him. Mm -hmm. But they saw that he was so well schooled by Coach Hetty defensively, where to go, where to be, how to move his feet, that they felt like not only he was a shooting in addition, but his ability to think and play defense as well. So they played him, and he's been very good. When I said he won a free throw shooting contest when he was 12, it was a national contest. Yeah. It was like <laughs> with three other kids in sixth grade. It was, it was everybody. I was going to say, I won a couple the other night against, you know, <laughs> Papa Shot. A couple of kids on the neighborhood, about six years old, and no chance. Huh? Both were two at the line, and that opportunity that Illinois needed because they need to find ways to score here against this Purdue defense. Yeah, Illinois in his own. Look for him. Look for Klein. He's already been in three different spots. Wow. And even with the zone, they're able to feed it inside to Haas, who scores and takes the Purdue lead up to 15. Mike, it's one thing to be bigger than everybody. That's fine. You see a lot of big kids who can't play, but that was a great catch by Haas. Yep. Terrific hands, and he always covers the last three feet. He goes at the ball, and the last three feet are his. The last good. three feet of the pass of he's the receiving. Pass. Yes, I'm sorry, Mike. Yes, the pass he's receiving, he shortens the distance and does not enable anybody to get to the ball. He gets there first because he moves towards it. Jalen Tate finds Morgan, who's off. Swanigan gets the rebound. You don't get many offensive rebounds against this team. Klein finding inside to Haas again. And this one's getting away from the Illini. 17 point Purdue lead. Mike, did you see Haas run? Yes. The floor was shaking, so you felt Haas <laughs> run. Man, did he run. Got to his spot before Morgan could catch him. Purdue has 18 points in the paint. 
And then to their four threes, it's a winning equation. 12 points from deep. Coleman lands at the deck hard on the challenge. Klein running to the corner. Swanigan rolling to the goal. Boiler up. Up 19. 15 in a row for Purdue. Roy trying to get something somehow, and usually that's the guy to do it. Hill on the take right at Haas. Didn't give ground. That is just working hard, man. That is just a guy who will not let his team down. That was terrific. That was all hard because he was surrounded by the two biggest people in the building. He just went right through him twice. See, Illinois has had a tough time getting inside to get their field goals in the paint. You understand that with the size from Purdue. When this Purdue team shoots well, they are such a tough team to beat. That's why the shooting of 14 climb, 31 Mathias, is going to be huge for them as they go into next week. Oh, there's no doubt about it. And the rest of this week, trying to win a big 10 yeah. Oh, absolutely. And you know what? I like about Purdue to run it. You get some easy buckets in this game. Morgan inside scores. I, I felt that, Dan, because sometimes when you have a big guy, two big guys, you're very deliberate. You feed the post. Yeah. You work off of him. You watched the Wisconsin game, their last game at home, their senior night. It was great. They were running up and down the floor and getting easy baskets because of their talent. Well, let's talk about it. Watch the biggest guy in the universe right here. Watch Isaac Haas sprint the floor. I mean, he is motoring. Universe? There's not too many bigger. I guess the big show from WWE fame, maybe. And he has great hands. And Swanigan out and running a little no-looker right here in the flush on the entire building. See with the guys, and then uh, he'll head up to Bristol Sunday to host our ESPN Bracketology special. Get you ready for the tournament. That ACC semifinal tonight: North Carolina, Notre Dame, and Virginia, Miami. Jay Phillips was talking about him. I believe at halftime between games. Forget which one, but Malcolm Brockton has done so much for Virginia. Well, almost, and this is an easy three for Davis. He needs to see it go down. And it does. Too easy out of the timeout. Purdue's up 18. Brockton, Brockton almost gets underappreciated, which is so odd for a Virginia team that's had three great seasons in the ACC and a league that's on a lot. And Virginia's on a lot, but you get the attention of Carolina and Duke, other stuff in the league. Brockton is just underappreciated, maybe because of all the defense we always talk about with the pack line and Virginia. But what an individual performer he has been for the Cavaliers. You know what Tony Bennett told me this week, Mike? And I didn't think about this. He said uh, Brogdon is the best Virginia player since Ralph Sampson. Mm -hmm. yeah. And I start thinking about it, and they've had really good players, obviously, but I think he's right when you look at it. Look at his body of work. Yeah, body of work. The success he's had, the leadership this mm -hmm. year, as other players have graduated and moved on. Michael Finke back in the game. And Johnny Hill in the passing lane. Anticipate. Again, that was scouting. He knew exactly where the ball was going, sprinted to get there. Swanigan surrounded and fouled. Finky and Morgan in there together now as John Gross is just looking for any combination that could just slow down this Purdue offense. John Gross is looking for help anywhere he can get it. He is all over the officials. He's trying two bigs. Purdue, when you said it, Mike, when they're making shots, they're a monster. And everyone, Dan, has talked about, you've talked about Indiana a lot in this league. Many people have Michigan State as a chic pick, number two in the country, but still not a one seed in most people's bracketology forecast. This team, as you said, if they hit shots, they're getting the least attention or love of the Big Ten teams, I think, nationally. But when you start watching them, because they have the defensive constitution as their foundation, if the ball's going in from the outside, you're going to have to stop these guys. They need too much inside. And I love the fact that they've started running. You know, yep. I mean, you can't in the NCAA tournament grind out every possession. Because right. then you play in the 50s. And every team can play it in the 50s. That's right. 
it's, it's, it's everybody like, can like, score in fifty. It's like hit, hit nine threes, hit a few free throws, a couple of baskets here, there, and, and all of a sudden you're yeah. at that number. Right. You're right. Yeah. So you you have to be able to get into the 70, 75 era area, and Purdue running, particularly their bigs running. That's that's how they would do that. Flash and cut. Coleman lands. Pinky and the three seconds is called by Lamont Simpson. Well, if you're running a clinic, hey, cut here into the middle. And they did it. The only problem is the other team had some big guys in there that kept their feet. Coleman lands and everything he could do, but Purdue had great discipline to hold their stance. Refreshing to see a three-second call in the college game. If we get a palming, then it's a big deal. Because <laughs> palming has gone by the way, which I don't mind, but... The defensive attention by none. And Matt Painter's on his team for the, for the little stuff right now. There was something within that play and the running of that play that was not done sharp. It, this is great when you're up 18 and you can get on your guys for that stuff. Trying to build a little sharper edge. And Matt Painter knows this is a big minute here. You, you, can, put, you can put Illinois in a, in a real trick bag here with a basket to stop. And I understand they're up, but this is how you think as a coach, Mike. Big collision, Haas and Finky were tangled. Yeah, it, it's not hard to go underneath Haas. And then right there is where Finky was as he was trying to block out and Haas jumped. He was worried about that left foot of Haas's that stuck as he was going down. Fortunately, he was able to get that foot up so the sneaker didn't stick and do any damage to the leg. You know, Mike, you do 7,000 games a week, so you've seen everything. Coaches see everything. You know, they've seen where they've blown a lead in the last, yeah. or, you know, where all of a sudden a three goes in here and, you know, now you, you turn it over. And that's what I'm saying. Even though they're up 18, this is a big last minute. Finky, that came off his hand. Raleigh knew it was off. Davis the rebound. Matt Painter just get one yeah. shot. Clocks are virtually in sync. Johnny Hill orchestrates. Matthias finds Haas. Oh, what a finish. As he steamrolls Hendrick Nunn. Final two seconds. Nunn got off the deck. Off the window. came out when it got a little bit close. First, out of it a little bit, has hit a three, nine points, four assists. I love the fact that, well, you know when Purdue's playing well, they're sharing the basketball, and certainly did in the first half. Illinois outscored Purdue by 14 in the second half of the regular season meeting in Champaign. It was early in the season, an 84 to 70 victory. For the Illini, you have to do that and then some in the second half. Well, Mike, you also remember 17 point lead against Iowa at home, and Rick Mountain let it get away and Purdue. almost let one, yeah, Purdue didn't almost let one get away against Maryland. Lead Lewis and Short Illinois playing their third game in three days. The teams that play in that first round, teams 11 through 14 in the conference standings, they face the very difficult task of trying to win five games in five days in this league. Illinois got the first two, including the upset yesterday of Iowa. Hammond saw the double and found Swanigan cut it. Great, great cut by Swanigan. Swanigan didn't stand. He was the post feeder. He's also the foreman. Foreman on a post double gets to the front of the rim. Swanigan did. Malcolm Hill at 12 in the first half. Foul called on Purdue. Here's Quint Kessnick. They're as big as vending machines, Mike. That's the words of John Gross. He actually used a brand name, but I don't want to mention it. I asked him the challenges of defending inside. He said they've tried a little bit of everything, whether it's leaving their guy on an island, double teams. 
at the end, I even said, Coach, you're going to send three this half? He said, we might have to try it. Uh, they've tried everything. Nothing's worked. I, I'm really impressed, though, with Coach's temperament. Well, what they need to do is speed the game up a little bit. You know, you know what I mean? You, you're down, obviously. If you want to go possession by possession, that's fine. And the season's over. Vince Edwards, the lead is 25. And it is the third game in three days for Illinois. So a little bit of a, a stress on the legs. But as we were told by one of the players at the Horizon League tournament, we're 18, we're 19, we're 20. We, we can, you know, we, AAU, we play four games in four days, and, or four games a day, and then go play for three, four days in a row. So I coached matter. AAU. I'm not sure it's the same intensity yeah. level. But, <laughs> <laughs> True. but your point is well taken. Hey, look, you play outside all day when you're a kid. These kids did not get here by sitting on a couch. And our guy Faust for Green Bay said that. And Green Bay got a win. They will be in the field. Somewhere around a 14 or 15 seed. I think I saw Joe Lenardi had them as we get two selection Sunday. Sports Center starts the coverage at 5 Eastern time as the picks are being announced and then a full breakdown. Bracketology presented by Staples 7 Eastern time on ESPN. Rachel Davis, last year's defensive player of the year, blocked it. And this year's defensive player of the year, AJ Hammonds, couldn't keep it alive, so it stays with Illinois. That's a good start. To laying out your defensive plan, you have two conference defensive players of the year. Not bad. One on the perimeter, yes. one in the post. Morgan able to connect it. We, we detailed it every time we've done an Illinois game, but as Dan so correctly alluded to earlier, you get people coming in during Champ Week and watching teams that they don't see all the time. Hammonds the miss, Swanigan the put back to take the lead back to 25. But this is a season that Illinois has uh, had to deviate from the plan. They lost Mike Thorne, the senior center, transferred from Charlotte to a knee injury. LaRon Black was suspended, and he was arrested in mid-February and charged with aggravated assault. Those are players lost in season and stay here with the Illini. And then Tracy Abrams is missing his second straight season, the preseason injury tore his Achilles in July. And a nice long visit with Tracy. And Allison Williams and I were at shoot around when we saw Illinois play Indiana earlier this year. And Tracy was telling us that he is close to finishing his third degree. Because of these injuries, he uh, had his undergrad degree in great position timing wise, but he's gotten two graduate degrees. Or he has one, he'll have another one here soon. And a great opportunity for him to, if the NCAA gives him a sixth year, get one more year to play as well. As Swanigan to score three field goals in the second half. Yeah, Tracy told me the same thing when I got to the game three hours early. <laughs> you were doing your radio I show. I love we Tracy Abrams, Mike. I, I think he is just a fantastic guard. And if the NCAA doesn't give him a six tier, I'm, I'm, I'm walking on the NCAA. Oh. Biggie Swanigan showing off the full arsenal. Three inside, the three from outside. It is a 30 point lead. Purdue showing off here on their way to the semifinals. ESPN. <laughs> and lost to Iowa at Illinois by 14. Some might classify as a bad loss given what happens to the Illini this year. Lost at Iowa, then at Maryland, at Michigan, at Indiana. You know what I like more than all of that is that Purdue's back to being Purdue, where, where hard work and hustle and playing defense is the basis for the program. And Matt Painter's done a really nice job of putting that back into the program after maybe a couple of recruiting mistakes. DJ Thompson hits the three. What a start to this half for Purdue. They led by 20 at the break, and in four minutes, they've extended that to a 33-point lead. Let's have Trish run over and see if we can get a running clock here. <laughs> Trish, our stage manager here. 15-2 start to the half for Purdue. Perhaps you can go make that suggestion. Yeah, I wouldn't mind. <laughs> no, stay right here. <laughs> After 50 years of... Illinois as a team, part of this 33. 
point Purdue lead. UConn's RPI this morning, according to the official NCAA RPI, is 59. Michigan at 62. Ohio State at 73. And it's just a guide that gives you a sense of the similarity of the teams that are being broken down. As the committee is not here in Indianapolis this year. NCAA selection committee has for a long time met where the NCAA headquarters were. Uh, this year they are meeting in New York. Hammonds is doubled. None knocked it away, but Hammonds just... It's like a, a grown-up playing with kids. I'm just taller than you. Just pop it over there. Davis the miss, on the rebound. Yeah, good job by Nunn getting underneath Hammonds right there to get a rebound. Coleman lands. Finds Maverick Morgan, who patiently waits for the big guys to fly by. He's as improved offensive player as there is in his league. Lately, he's come on at 14 last night or yesterday afternoon against Iowa. It's pretty good right there. Bodes well for next year. That ended a 10-0 run. He's out of bounds off of Illinois. This has been a very good week for the athletic department of Illinois until today. Of course, the news coming out over the weekend and made official on Monday that Lovey Smith was hired as the new football coach in Champaign. It's been a year of tumult, turmoil, and turnover in the athletic department for Illinois. And and things have settled down a bit, and the hiring of Lovie Smith certainly got the attention of a lot of people nationally. Congratulations to Josh Whitman for getting that done. 37 years old, athletic director, former tight end. Illinois hires Lovie Smith, gives John Gross a vote of confidence. First day, right? First day he, First he day. fired Bill Kubik, Kubik and uh, had Lovie Smith, had discussions with Lovie Smith. There was... Uh, Dissatisfaction with the treatment of some athletes in football and women's basketball at Illinois. Swanigan getting it inside to Havens. It'll go the other way, and it's going to be on Purdue. And they're a big guy. Carolina Notre Dame coming up tonight on ESPN. Then Virginia and Miami. You know, we've talked about Notre Dame and Virginia and Miami, and this has become a story for a lot of folks this year. They don't talk about Carolina as much. Uh, we maybe expect another gear from North Carolina, but, but the gear they've been in all year has earned them a number one seed yeah. in all likelihood. So, in some ways, I hate to say it's a Carolina, it's a brand name that they've been disrespected. That's the term that always goes around, but I think it's because of their potential. You feel like they could really be an elite, elite team and not have those momentary lapses they sometimes have. Oh, so Edwards fouls Hill. My, my problem with them being an elite elite team is their shooting. I don't think they shoot the ball real well, Mike. I, I think Marcus Page, who has struggled throughout throughout the year, been better lately, is the one guy that can make shots, but they really don't have guys like a Duncan Robinson per se, that it just every time he shoots it, you think it's going in. They don't have anybody like that. There's so many teams have that designated shooter or two who spreads and spaces the floor. Yeah, and it doesn't have to be a guard. It doesn't have to be a forward. We've seen four men be able to pick and pop, that kind of thing. But they make some. But And, and you said, Paige, he's made more lately. He's yeah, a terrible yeah, slump terrible. in January, yeah. but he's turned that back around. Yeah, and, and he is as clutch a guy. I mean, if you count North Carolina out in, that, in today's games, or you count them out in that NCAA tournament, you're out of your mind. Right. They're, they're one of the best four or five teams in America. Hill with the foul at midcourt. Rice and cheer from the... Purdue fans, the one and two seed lines, Kansas steamrolling along. Two in the Can ACC I, there, Virginia, North Carolina. You can do anything you want. It's a 30 point well, game. I, I want to tell you why Purdue fans went, you know, sarcastic right there. Gene Cady was one of the great foul counters in America, and it was six to nothing the fouls this half. Yeah, Purdue had that. six. So, like Indiana fans with Bob Knight, Purdue fans are conditioned by Gene Cady. <laughs> I'm telling you. He used to argue and yell at seven to one. It's eight to two. He could count fouls like nobody that I've ever seen. So Purdue fans picked up on it. Painter unhappy with the turnover for his big man, Isaac Hoss. That, that's part of the great feel and nature of the Indiana Purdue rivalry. When we talk rivalries and we're talking North Carolina, of course, Duke, that is the hallmark rivalry discussed so often. You always say within a league, within a state, the Indiana Purdue rivalry to experience it would give you an appreciation for how deep the roots are in the head to head battle. So many of the kids play against each other yeah. in high school and see each other in the summer. 
Illinois has missed their last 10 three-pointers. Purdue's sharp shooter knocks one down. The lead goes to 33. Edwards, such a good performer on this team. Yeah, he is terrific, and, and he is their do-it-all guy. I mean, he's the guy that can do this, he can defend better players. He's the guy that can score in a variety of ways on the other end, and that's huge as we move forward here. Jalen Tate, DJ Williams, Michael Finke gave up the dribble on Swanigan. Kendrick not across the lane. A little floater over Haas. Won't go. There's certainly a lot of people who were hoping to see that Indiana-Purdue rivalry renewed in the Big Ten tournament here in Indianapolis. It would have been a, a great stage tomorrow, but that changes with Michigan knocking off Indiana earlier today. I talked to one of Michigan's players at halftime, and he said that, you know, we played perfect down the stretch. And they did. Absolutely perfect. Look at that assist total for Purdue. It's not hits the three. On the outside, Kendrick Nunn. Do we, we don't engage in rumors on this. No, no, no. Okay, no, no. good. No. No. It's just so wrong. It's just so no, wrong. I mean, there's a rumor forward. going around that Coach Katie may be coming back as a local high school coach. High school coach? Yeah, there's a rumor. Uh, <laughs> this is not your radio show. I know it's the middle of the afternoon. You're usually on radio. games here momentarily it's so odd I, when I got my start doing games at ESPN it would be the, the late 90 maybe 97 I uh, had a chance to call Big East tournament games for several years it was a conference I grew up in as a Syracuse alum and growing up in New York it, it's just so odd to be watching a UConn highlight during champ week and Jim Calhoun's in the studio right. so many years we'd see coach Calhoun on one of the sidelines at Madison Square Garden Battling for the American. Yeah, yeah you can't right. battling for the American yeah. now. That one. Haas to the block inside. Ryan Klein gets it. We mentioned Madison Square Garden earlier. This tournament will be played there in a couple of years. After D.C. next year, and then a return back to Chicago and Indianapolis, and alternating for four years, 19, 20, 21, and 22. Last off Johnny Hill. What, what do you think about those evening games we talked about, Dan? Start with that. That first one in Michigan State will make its debut in the tournament. Well, we did the Michigan State-Ohio State game a week or so ago, and that was never close. I think Ohio State has a chance because Mike Loving, I, I said it earlier, he's playing at a level that he really hasn't played at all year. He had 24 last night and did it easy. I think that Michigan State goes the best team in the country. I really do. I just don't know that anybody over the last month has played better than them. And Denzel Valentine, he was my preseason player of the year. And, that was thrown to the camera. It was. It was. Coleman Lenz got in the air, tried to behind the head pass. The pass was good. Unfortunately, there was nobody there to receive it. So it turned over that there. was inside the plane. <laughs> it's it's the confines out. of the court. <laughs> it's certainly outside in the exactly. sixth row there was a guy willing, ready, willing, and able. So Ohio State was with Michigan in that next four after yeah. Michigan's moved up as Haas connects again. So Haas has hit all of his field goals today. Six of six. Hammonds on the bench with three fouls, but he's 5 of 6. Four Boilermakers in double figures. Yeah, you know, the other one, Maryland. I, I, I'm really interested in seeing Maryland. Well, I tell you, they're getting a lot of work underneath the bucket there. Catching. Tate with the turnover. Um, Maryland's interesting. Maryland came out at Indiana last week, last Sunday, with a real focus. That focus went away about eight minutes in, and there's two things with that, Mike. Number one, Part of it was Indiana, no question. Home game, Yogi Ferrell's final game, all that kind of stuff. But it's also showed me, man, Matthias, another three-pointer, his third three. And Purdue is 11 of 19 shooting triples. But the other part is when you break up as a team like Maryland did, it makes me question how connected you are. How are you going to play under adversity, and can you play together for 40 minutes? We're going to find out tonight because I guarantee you, Tim Miles in Nebraska after last night's performance is going to play really hard. Jalen yeah. Coleman lands. He was fouled there. Go ahead, Quinn. Well, I, I sensed in shoot-around this morning from Jake Lehman that, that this team is galvanized now. Second half of the season wasn't pretty. You know, Lehman said nine more. And so their, their focus is winning this thing, <laughs> using it as a springboard to the NCAA turn. I think of all the teams still alive in this bracket, they have the most to gain 
in, in terms of walking out of, uh, of Indy with some momentum. Uh, but I do question their depth. Uh, they, and I think that showed up late in the year. They, they, they kind of ran out of gas. I don't really believe in them. I, I've, I've never believed in them all. You wrote an article for ESPN the magazine, or excuse me, ESPN.com uh, last May. Don't believe necessarily in Maryland because there's so many moving parts here. You've got Trimble who's thinking about the NBA. You've got Stone who definitely is thinking about the NBA. Not even sure he's in college. Robert Carr. You just have so much there that I have not really bought them as a elite, elite team all year. Kendall Stevens set an illegal screen trying to get Johnny Hill free. And Stevens, a player who was in the rotation earlier in the year, now has fallen out and picks up the foul. ESPN's tournament. Sports season when that bracket comes out, everybody wants to get their hands on it. Here's Klein in transition, leading the three on two, and off the wing, the foul is given as Johnny Hill went on the drive. So Illinois was on the other side of one of these in the first game when they beat Minnesota by 33, and now find themselves down 35 to Purdue. We, we talked about it earlier. With John Josh Whitman taking over as the athletic director and his quote immediately was John Gross will continue as the coach left no doubt that John was in position and uh, spent a good amount of time talking to a very impressive new athletic director who was at a terrific school at Wash U Washington University in St. Louis and Whitman said no just on immediate observation of meeting John Gross and you see the foundation of the program, what's in place, who's where, and the enthusiasm. He loved what he saw there. And there is Whitman, 37 years old, as Dan said, former tight end. Kurt Kittner was his quarterback in the good days of Illinois football, which was Sugar Bowl in the late 90s. That was the year after Whitman left, went on to the NFL. Academic All-American Law School in the business world. Really a great athletic director hire for this day and age. At a time when Illinois needed it because of the Issues I meant before I mentioned before some claims of mistreatment football women's basketball student athletes weren't happy with inside nice move by Finky who goes into score so they need stability they need somebody who knows the culture of the place and he does that not only does that it's a home run by yeah. hiring Lovey Smith to get a lot of attention to football and keeps John Gross in place with hopes for a good recruiting class and players coming back next year yeah there's no question the home run hire Line again. Let me tell you, Mike, if you're Michigan, you are rooting for every one of these threes to go in. Explain. Water yeah. finds its level. You want to shoot 80% on threes? Uh, eventually, you're going to get down to where you normally shoot threes, which is somewhere around 37, 38%. So you're due for a bad night. So if you are Michigan, make them all, Purdue. I'm telling you. Hill was driving. He was fouled. Half, they would still be up by six. Purdue scored 45 in the first half. Illinois still trying to get to 45 and 44. Isaac Haas, seven of eight from the field. In normal world people terms, Michael Finke is a big guy. Right. Yeah, like he is. Walking down the street, he's a big dude. He was a flying elephant's backside right there with Haas. Haas just buried him. Jaquiel Taylor, the redshirt freshman from Cambridge, Mass. Missed most of last year with injury, medical hardship. Liz Frank injury that stunted his start to his Boilermaker career. He's in the game. He's played 11 games thus far this season, 50 minutes before he came in. Dan, we talked about this earlier. There are... Long roots in the Chicago high school basketball system with Illinois players and getting those in state players. Clyde missed the three, Haas the rebound. Continues on his great role at a 41 point deficit, now the largest deficit of the season here for Illinois in what will be their final game of the season. They go out with a huge thud here this afternoon. John Gross this is a very a good recruiting class in the Chicago area over the next couple of seasons, thrown back 
but missed by Williams. They are hopeful that that, along with the players we mentioned earlier, players they already have coming in in the recruiting process, a couple of guys who are sitting out, that they can have an impact and make a difference going forward as Kendall Stevens hits the three. Stevens, as I mentioned earlier, missed four games, the death of a high school teammate. It's a difficult time. The Purdue staff did the right thing as Stevens had to go away and deal with his emotions with the loss, but uh, he has come back and the rotation was set. They were playing great, and the fans know the story. They followed so close. They're so happy to see Stevens coming to knock down. And, and even happier, you and I have done a lot of Purdue games. We watched film. It was really nice to see Kendall Stevens smile right there, Mike. Yeah, yeah, I haven't yeah. seen him smile a whole lot. He's a really nice kid. You know, his dad ever terrific. His mom awesome. I got a chance to meet him in their recruiting process, AAU process. It's just nice to see the kids smile. I think he goes tumbling down and Haas with the foul. Hey, the spirit is willing with thinking. It's not about heart. It's just it's just about size. You know, there's nothing you can do when Haas has it going like this. Uh, they have Barely in their two seasons on campus together played together at this on the floor in terms of Hamilton Hotsley <laughs> these guys <laughs> Man. You know, They're not used to being on the bench at the same right. time one of them's always right. in right. Right. So. <laughs> And they don't play together because Matt Painter feels like they turn it over every yeah. time he's tried in practice Or he's tried it a few times but late last year. He tried he just kept yeah. turning it over Maverick Morgan um, the hook shot makes it 83 to 44 Illinois will miss the NCAA tournament for three consecutive seasons. And that's why there's the immediate need when a new athletic director was hired to say John Gross will continue as the head coach. It's been a series of injuries. There's some talent on this team, but they're just missing something on you know, a night-to-night -night basis, and it's a different thing. One night they'll get the good post play, but not follow it up with a 40-minute effort. It's been part of the case as Illinois is trying to find its way. Good read by none. Nutt finishes with the dunk. You know, Mike, doesn't it feel like since we've been doing these games, what have we been doing, five years? Uh, five on the calendar, yeah, 20, 20 dog my years for you, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Awesome for me, like minutes for me. Anyway. Um, doesn't it feel like Illinois has always been missing something? Yeah, just one, one thing, one thing. Leadership, you know, back when... when Brandon Paul he, team today yeah. five years ago, tremendous yeah. score. It just feels like there's an oomph to it that they're missing. Or yeah, that terrific coaches here, Brad, um, Bruce Weber, terrific. John Gross have proven themselves, but it's just like they miss something. And it's definitely not a lack of enthusiasm. John Gross, one of the most enthusiastic, enthusiastic people you will find. 12-0 run comes to an end. Brady Eifert. Stephen Torre about to check in for Purdue. Uh, on the other side of this media timeout, guys who don't see the court all that often, they get a great thrill, a chance to play in the Big Ten tournament. Did the same thing in college. I'll give you a hint. Early 80s Ohio State. Sports Center will be coming up to Nicole Briscoe and Kevin Connors after the Miami Virginia game. Coming up tonight. I have no idea. Clark Keller. Did Clark do that? Yeah, when Clark Keller was in college, he got his really? real estate license. Yeah. I didn't yep. know that. Of course, you see Clark during the uh, NCAA tournament. This is our uh, final game of the season covering the Big Ten. We say. Best wishes to our friends at Turner and at CBS who will be covering the NCAA tournament after we wrap up Champ Week. Torre and Eifert handle. Stevens on the drive. Rebounded by the heck of a rebound by Eifert. Eifert showed pretty good hops. Well, that's good athletic genes there. No kidding. For sure. His dad was a tough dude. Man. Was he? Yeah, he was tough. 
Lee, perfect guy for Gene Cady to start his program around. Morgan on the foul as we uh, say farewell to the Big Ten this season. Thank you to Jim Delaney uh, wrapping up his 27th year as commissioner of the Big Ten. Incredibly this league has had two commissioners in the last 45 years. Wayne Duke starting in 1971 and Jim Delaney who's been just an outstanding visionary and leader a voice at every level of intercollegiate athletics and uh, always a pleasure when we come to the tournament get a chance to spend time with the commissioner and part of his great staff Mark Rudner Diane Dietz among others and the folks here at the Big Ten are just uh, a pleasure to be around and we thank them they're always uh, wonderful to spend this uh, conference jamboree if you will uh, around the folks you get to see in different parts of the country all year long and everybody comes together in Indy or Chicago and next year DC and after that New York. One of the great nights is when we get to go out to dinner with the commish and Diane and Mark and Mark. Oh, yeah. oh, couldn't forget Mark. Mark. He pays. <laughs> <laughs> Obviously a concept you're not familiar with uh -oh. thus it doesn't register with you. <laughs> get in there. Get in there. He's thinking the same thing. He didn't want to say it. But good for Toira. Good for a kid who did it academically from Lafayette to get a basket in the Big Ten tournament. As we continue to uh, say our thanks, many thanks to the people who work in the athletic communication department, so uh, often known earlier days of college athletics as the sports information directors. You never have a need for more information in this league. Toyota missed the three. Uh, they are so complete in what they do with a smile on their face and the assistant coaches, the coaching staff, it's an absolute pleasure to be around the Big Ten and, and all the players too. You can't tell you how many nice kids these last five years that I've had the pleasure of meeting and you for years longer. And a thank you from all of us to all of you. Jaquiel Taylor, 24th point of the year on that field goal. Just to stop here so John Gross can get Cameron Liss, the sophomore from Northbrook, Illinois, in the game to wind this down. If I may talk about I for a second, mm -hmm. and what a great walk-on to have. He's come in here. He's got a couple rebounds. He's got enough size to guard bigger guys. He's, he's quick enough and active enough to guard others. That, I'm, I'm guessing, has great grades. I mean, you bring him walk-ons in with bad grades, you're going to get fired. <laughs> you know, what a I'm watching him, and I'm thinking, man, is that a great guy to have walk-on? Purdue has had 12 different players score in this game. Lee Lewis with the hoop as this one's about done. So Purdue and Michigan splitting their regular season games. This Illinois season will end after two good wins and some good moments to wrap up the season. They go back to Champaign. Their arena is the final year of a three-year renovation, $170 million. So the future hopefully bright for Illinois, at least the opportunity to succeed there. And for Purdue, it's a semifinal date with Michigan tomorrow afternoon. Dominant performance, a 31-point win for Matt Painter, who gets to 25 wins on the season. Yeah, Matt, that's for the last 10 years, 25-win team for Purdue.